Kia ora from New Zealand everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Before we get into today's jigsaw puzzle, I just want to thank everyone that left a comment for my grandma on the 4,000 subscriber video. I copied all your comments and I emailed them to her and she loved it. She absolutely loved it. She read them, reread them multiple times. She sent me like five emails thanking me for doing that, thanking you all for commenting. So I really appreciate you who did that. You just made her day. She loved it. She really did. And then for everyone that gave me suggestions on the 5,000 subscriber video as to what to put onto my blank wall, so many great suggestions. Like I would read a comment and go, that's what I should do. Yep. Great. And then I'd read the next comment and go, oh, that, that's awesome. That's what I should do. Great. So I have so many ideas swirling around in my head and eventually something will happen <laughs> and I'll pick one and I'll go with it and the wall will, will, you know, become colorful again. But as for now, it's still white, but thank you all for your suggestions. And just note that um, one person had commented that it'd be great to see like small, indie brands on the channel and i absolutely agree it's just that shipping not everyone ships to new zealand in fact i was recently contacted by a company and i really wanted to try out their product but then they realized i was in new zealand and they don't ship internationally so i thought because i know i have a north american accent i'm going to start my videos by saying kiora from new zealand Kiora, I'll put the spelling up on the, the screen, is a greeting in Māori. The Māori language is called Te Reo. It stands for the language, if hopefully I have that all correct. And Kiora is like, hello, welcome. It's a greeting in Māori. So, Kiora. Let's just dive right into today's video. Now, I know you've seen Clementoni on this channel before. The reason why I got this one, it's a blackboard jigsaw puzzle. So my understanding is the center area here, you can write on it with chalk. This is the think outside the box um, version. I did not see an artist listed anywhere. Perhaps this is just designed in-house. On the back of the box, they do show a second one. Life is too short for bad coffee. Ah, oh, geez, I love that. And um, I'm not sure if they have other versions of this, but those are the only two I know of right now. I thought during the time lapse, it would be really cool to chat about expressions I've learned since moving to New Zealand because they don't say think outside the box. They say, think outside the square. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you during the time lapse some of the expressions I've learned, maybe some I've picked up since moving to New Zealand. So let's change my camera angle and we'll have a closer look at the boxes and the pieces inside. So here's the box. It is quite large. I'm hoping that they use this uh, size for larger puzzles than just a thousand pieces. I know some companies try to minimize how many different size boxes they produce, but this is quite a big box, but nice large image of the puzzle in the front. I think it's big enough because it's not a super detailed image. I do think it'll be tricky because there's so much black, lots of white. It'll be fun to sort though. On the back of the box, it does say that the frame and glue are not included. And it says, of course, don't put anything on the front of the jigsaw puzzle. You don't wanna ruin the writing surface. On the back, you can glue it. I might just tape it. And it says also to use a dry cloth to rub out the chalk. Now let's have a look inside the box. I mean, it's a good, good box. I always try to reuse my box anyway. And um, just a little pamphlets included. This of course is there. I've seen this ad before. What is it? My frame me up. I guess it's where you can send in a photo and perhaps what well, you turn it into a jigsaw puzzle and you can get it framed. And then, oh, I find this always interesting. They include this because a lot of people may not realize that for a standard thousand piece, you actually get a thousand and eight pieces. <laughs> so, and their panorama thousand pieces, 990 pieces. Quite interesting. So that 6,000 downtown that I did from Clementoni was actually 6,016 pieces. And I do believe they have service if you have like issues with the puzzle afterwards. So this is like your proof of purchase and you can contact them for help. Here's the bag of pieces. You see what I mean by the bag being so small? There's so much extra room in the box. 
The pieces look like a nice big size. I'm just gonna dump them all out here. Oh, I'm terrible at opening plastic bags. And I know I typically don't open bags that way, but I did anyway. What I'm curious to see here is if I can find pieces that you're meant to write on, and if there's like a difference in the texture, I may have to wait until the puzzle is complete. And maybe I can take some close up photos because it might be hard for you all to see. But like this piece, for example, I know this won't come across on camera. I can see two different kind of like shading, like this part here looks nice and kind of more bright, more glossy, and this one is more like matte. I wonder if that's like the chalkboard part. So it'll be interesting once I get going to see if I can notice a difference between the pieces that you can write on with chalk and the pieces that you can't. I'm assuming you're not supposed to be able to write everywhere on the jigsaw puzzle front with chalk. Oh, I'll take it, two pieces already assembled, thank you. <laughs> oh, the pieces look nice, standard Clementoni thickness, sturdiness, as I would expect. Not, not really any puzzle dust. It's going to be tricky. Lots of black, lots of white. I'll probably try to do some build as I sort and um, as well as just take my time. I'm in no rush. Does that go there? No, look at me already trying to build it. So fun. Yeah, it'll be interesting. But yeah, I can't wait to find pieces. See, that looks like that could be a chalkboard piece because it's all black and it definitely feels like it has a different texture than this border piece. This border piece is shiny and nice and smooth. This piece is more matte and it feels like there's a texture on it. So there's definitely something different with the area where you can write on with chalk. Okay, well, let's just dive right in and start building this thing. Ooh, more pieces stuck together. <laughs> They're little gifts from the puzzle fairies. Oh, I can't wait to put this together. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. Okay, let's just crack right in. Sometimes I forget what the words were that we used when we spoke in North America. And I'll say to my hubby, I'll say, I know we didn't call them gumboots before, but I can't remember what we used to call them. And then I'll be like, oh yeah, rain boots or rubber boots. Another expression that was quite interesting is the first time someone said that they were going to shout lunch. And I was like, are they going to come by at noon and just yell out the word lunch so we all know that it's lunchtime? I, I don't get it. But to shout something is, I would say, to treat. Like, oh, I'll treat you to a coffee. Oh, I'll shout you a coffee. And another expression is to sing out. So if you need help or need anything, oh, just sing out. I mean, you know, just ask. Just, just let me know. So fast forward about seven minutes because... Someone forgot to start the camera recording. We won't name names, no, no need to blame anyone. <laughs> but basically I finished all the pieces that have a lot of the big detailed color on them with all the words and the drawings. What I have remaining now, this big pile of only black pieces. I still have quite a few pieces with some coloring, some of the yellow stars. I couldn't figure out exactly where they went. Oop. Won't figure out where that one goes if I lose it, but like some of the stars. Um, so these pieces have a bit of yellow on them, maybe a bit of blue and red. I'll, f I'll figure out where they go within the image. This, I believe, is a lot of the tic-tac-toe board, right, that goes about here. I'll try to do that next. And then the wording, think outside the box. The outside, I believe that's a lot of the letters up there. Over here, I have the border, the edge pieces. I think that could be a bit tricky. However, the one thing I really like about Clementoni is the variety of prong shapes. See that prong right there? That's a nice, like, wide, squarish prong. And then here we have, like, a small little round prong. And even, you know, a curve pronged. And all this helps with minimizing false fits because not only is there a variety of piece cuts, but of prong shapes, which is really nice. Now, this is part of the border and you can see it's got a little bit of shine to it. It's nice and smooth and it definitely feels different from the pieces where you're meant to write with chalk. So these pieces with chalk, I'll include photos in case this doesn't show up well, they're not as shiny and they feel different. They have a different texture to them. 
So there definitely is a feel to the ones where you can write with chalk. I'm hoping this won't take too long, all those black pieces. Now, if I look at the box, and I know this won't come across on camera because it's hard to see, I have to look at the box almost at a downward angle like that, but you can actually see the piece cut shapes on the box. So I could try to follow the pattern of the pieces on the box. I'm not sure if it's actually the pattern of the jigsaw puzzle itself, but it could well be, it could well be. So what I'm planning on doing next is I'm gonna go through and finish the pieces with the stars and bits of yellow and red, try to do the tic-tac-toe, try to do the lettering, and then over here, this is the rest of the pieces, um, the think part of the wording, all the swirls, all the other lines are included in here. So I do have quite a lot of pieces remaining to go. I'll probably then do the border and finish off with the black pieces. But it's lots of fun and what I love, it's laying nice, flat and smooth. Like it's a really nice puzzle. I've always been really content and happy with Clementoni puzzles and this does not disappoint. Very nice, very nice quality. So sorry that I forgot to start the camera recording and you missed a little bit of the assembly. But yeah, we'll go back to our top down view and see how I go. Enjoy. A very Kiwi expression is sweet as. And it's sweet as, A-S. And basically on its own, it just means cool, awesome. But we would normally say like, oh, that's maybe sweet as honey, or I'm hungry as a hippo, or that was fast as lightning. They just remove the last word. So they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm hungry as, I'm tired as, oh, the, he's fast as, and that's all they say. And it's quite interesting. I don't know if I say sweet as so much. I don't think so. Um, but it's very much a Kiwi expression just to say, oh yeah, that, that's cool as. I think more sweet as though just means it's cool, it's awesome. Very, very Kiwi expression. The first time someone told me ta, just T-A, was in an email. And I thought that something happened, they forgot to type all the words and they sent the email before finishing what they had to say. And I went to see them and I said, oh yeah, I think you forgot to finish your email, it just had ta written. And they went, yeah, thanks. And I went, o okay, so you're gonna, what did you wanna write in the email? They said, I just, you know, thank you. And I'm like, oh, okay. And they were looking at me weird and I'm looking at them weird until I realized ta, T-A, is an expression for thanks. Thank you. And I was like, oh, okay, that, that's really weird. But you know, okay, fine. One expression I do think I use a lot is heaps, which means a lot. So I think in my videos I do say like, oh, that was heaps better. You know, that's an expression I have picked up. It's the next day. Yesterday I was able to finish the main part of the jigsaw puzzle and I loved it. And to tell you the truth, like even the border wasn't that bad. There was enough variety in piece shapes, in prong shapes, that I was able to complete it all, even the writing. Just had to take my time and refer to the image on the box. Loved it. And can you see, I love how they have the rounded edges. So cute. The quality is amazing. Like you can pick this up no problem. Can you see that on camera? No problem. Quality is just top notch. Love Clementoni. I'm estimating that I have what, maybe 200 black pieces, hopefully less than 250. I think I just need to sort by piece shape and do the Cinderella shoe method. Now I did refer to the box because remember I told you I could see patterns, piece patterns on the box, but it doesn't match up <laughs> to what I have. So I'm a little bit disappointed there because that was going to be my hopeful helpful solution but now that won't help so I might try to go online and see if I can find a completed image of the jigsaw puzzle and if the pattern matches then I will use it to help me solve this and hopefully it won't take too many hours but the other thing is I don't have a piece of chalk I need to go out and find a piece of chalk I think my hubby might have um, engineering chalk which is it is it either limestone or soapstone? I'm not sure, so I might try that. But I definitely need some chalk to try it out. So I guess at this point, I'm just gonna sort by pea shape, try to find an image of the completed puzzle, and then just use the Cinderella shoe method as best as possible to complete these last pieces. But yeah, it's, it was lots of fun. It, it was lots and lots of fun. And I would definitely like recommend it, well, it's lots of fun until this point. Talk to me after I get through all those black pieces. 
and the the coffee one I think would be really cute as well oh goodness well let's get to finishing off this Clementoni blackboard jigsaw puzzle going back to the idea of emails is there's an expression and I don't know if I can ever get used to this one but oh flick that to me oh I have a digital file for you yeah just flick it to me and I'm like huh flick what so to send someone an email is to flick them an email I thought that was quite interesting as well to flick an email and here's a couple of words like that we've picked up I don't know if we use them a lot so you know the sidewalk they say footpath I do think maybe we do say footpath a bit I know we've started to say the boot of the car which is the trunk but we don't say bonnet and maybe that's just in general because we don't say the word like hood often anyway this is one expression I, I don't think I use togs t-o-g-s I was like what is that that's like swimming gear I think it can apply to like a one-piece suit or like swimming trunks your togs I don't I don't use this word for a sweater they say jumper and for sunglasses sunnies that's kind of cute um, not a word I use I'll, I'll say sunglasses this one I'm not sure which one I use I may have adapted cell phone instead of saying cell phone they'll just say your mobile your mobile phone oh the first time someone told me they had to go home because they needed to lux and I was like lux what what are, what are you doing so like Electrolux, the brand for vacuum cleaners, I think they've shortened and taken the Lux part off. To Lux is to vacuum. Or they'll say Hoover, oh, I need to Hoover. And that's also to vacuum. I mean, I've heard the expression, oh, he, he Hoovers his food, like he just gobbles it all down. But yeah, to Lux and to Hoover is to vacuum. So that's different again. Oh, the jandals. In New Zealand, they love their jandals. And maybe I do use that expression a bit more than what we would know as flip-flops. A batch, but it's spelled B-A-C-H, but it's pronounced batch. This was completely new to me. I had no idea what this was. It's a holiday home, like a holiday home, a cottage, we would say. So that was interesting. Um, the first time someone told me they went tramping, I, I gave them quite a look because it, it's not what I thought it meant. It means to go hiking. I was like, oh, 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 okay. Ooh, that's an interesting word. And um, I also remember we were going to buy furniture and the salesperson said, it's in good nick. And I thought I heard it has a good nick. And I'm like, oh, it has, it has a nick on it. Like it's, it's got a dent or something. She's like, no, 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 it's in good nick. And I'm like, well, huh? how can a nick be good? But in good nick means to be in, in good condition. So I did not know what that meant either. <laughs> now this one I refuse to use. So oh, a Chrissy Prezi. If you can figure out that what that is and you're not from around this part of the world, I'll be impressed. Prezi is short for present. So, oh yeah, I'll get you a Prezi, short for present. But a Chrissy Prezi? is a Christmas present and I'm like what <laughs> really <laughs> you got a shortened Christmas present to Chrissy Prezi like that doesn't make any sense to me I don't relate it but you they even have like Prezi cards you know gift cards what I would know as a gift card it feels weird because it's like we're speaking the same language we're all speaking English it's all English words but they have just different meanings it does feel like maybe New Zealand takes more of a British influence perhaps on their words um, in their language and expressions than Canada does um, but I've learned a lot and it is lots of fun and I'm getting used to it and of course they understand what I'm saying I find it more difficult when I just didn't understand the first few years living here some of their expressions but I have picked them up now especially like watching TV and movies so yeah, there's just some expressions and saying some, some things we've learned along the way. I do like saying heaps. Yeah, I like that word a lot. This was so much fun to build. Love the Clementoni quality. Like this is not yet taped. I'm just picking it up. I loved it. I will try to make sure that I insert photos if, if I can capture the difference between the pieces that have the blackboard cover on it and the pieces that are just shiny. Um, the one thing to note is I did go online and I found a finished image of this jigsaw puzzle because those black pieces would have taken forever. I sorted by piece shape. I found an image online and I'll put a link to their 
blog. I think it was Puzzler1909. So thank you so much for posting such a good image of the finished jigsaw puzzle. I was able to use it as a reference, and then I just used the Cinderella shoe method to complete it. You will notice because the finish is different on the blackboard pieces that where four pieces connect, it's as if they were a bit harder to separate. So you just see a little bit of, of white, like the backing, but it, it's not bad. It's not a problem. I definitely think that if you try to piece multiple times in the wrong spot, you might wear the edges a bit just because it's not a nice smooth finish like the rest of the jigsaw puzzle. It feels a bit rougher. So I'm glad I had the reference image to, to use. And then I avoided, you know, a lot of trying piece after piece over and over again. I just used that soapstone chalk to write on it. It was great. I'm sure if you use a more standard, like thick, you know, sidewalk chalk, that would work even better and show up even more. I'm going to tape the back of this. I'm just going to tape it and I might put it up on the wall behind me here somewhere. Uh, I think it's just lots of fun. It was a lot of fun to do, a lot of fun to build. I really enjoyed all the writing everywhere and the border wasn't too bad. I thought it might be tricky, but it wasn't. I have an idea that if after a while the blackboard area, if it kind of wears or loses its writability, I'm not sure it will, I'm just saying if it does, you could easily go to a craft store and buy some blackboard chalk and just paint over that area. And I'm sure that wouldn't ruin the jigsaw puzzle and it would just fill in the gaps even. I just used a soft cloth to wipe it off and it's perfect. You can't even see really any residual. I mean, after a while, any blackboard, you know, gets a bit chalky and a bit whiter, but this is fine. I just had so much fun doing it. Oh, and I did find two other designs. There was one with a hot air balloon, something about adventure, and another one with a margarita glass and something about drinks. So I've seen four of these blackboard chalk writable jigsaw puzzles from Clementoni so far. But let me know, have you done one of these? Did you enjoy it? Are there other brands that have like a blackboard jigsaw puzzle? But that black area I think would have taken me forever without the reference image. So thanks again to Puzzler1909 for putting that up. And thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, Ciao!